Thank you so much for joining me for a 75 minute yoga class. We're going to start with three rounds of sun salutes to warm up our body. And then we will hop into 26 and two yoga, 26 yoga postures and two breathing exercises. If at any point during class, something does not feel right for your body, remember that you can modify a posture, you can do something else, or you can skip it entirely. Yoga can be challenging at times and that's okay, but we're never going to a point of pain, a point where we could cause harm to ourselves or someone else. For the sun salutes, you'll come towards the top of your mat with your feet close together, standing tall, arms down by your side. I'll stand back a bit and show you in for free. Bring your hands together, heart center, and we'll begin with three rounds of Surya Namaskar A Sun Salute. As you inhale, lift your arms up overhead, look up as if you are saluting or greeting Surya, the god of the sun. Exhale, bend your knees and fold forward, hands to floor, relax your head. Inhale, lengthen into a halfway lift. You can have your hands on your thighs, your shins, or the floor in front of you. Exhale, bend your knees, put your hands on the floor, and step back into a high plank or tabletop position. On your next exhale, hug your elbows all the way into your ribs and lower down halfway like you're pulling yourself down onto the floor. Inhale, come up into a back bend. You can do cobra with elbows bent and thighs on the floor, or up dog with arms straight and thighs off the floor. Exhale, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up for down dog. Can bend one knee, straighten the other, pedal out your legs, and then press your heels to the floor, hips to the ceiling, drop your head, look for your thighs behind you. If down dog is not speaking to you, come down onto your knees, take a child's pose instead, sink your hips down as you stretch your arms forward. So either way, you're lengthening the back and opening the hips. On your next inhale, hands to the floor, look forward, step forward, lengthen, halfway lift. Slowly exhale, fold, bend your knees, relax your head. Inhale, arms of your ears, hands together, root your eyes, lift up, look up. Exhale, hands down. Inhale, lift your arms, look up. Exhale, bend your knees, fold. Inhale, lengthen, halfway, back flat. Exhale, hands to floor, step back into your high plank or tabletop, and let's hold here for a moment. If that lowering down motion does not work for you, skip it entirely. Go straight from your plank or tabletop directly into your down dog or child's pose. Otherwise, hug your elbows in and lower down. Inhale, come up into your back bend. Exhale, lift your hips up for down dog or sink your hips down for child's pose. If you're doing down dog, spread your fingers wide, root down through your knuckles, the pads of your fingers, your palms, the space between your index finger and thumb so that you're not putting all of your body weight into your wrists. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen, halfway, chest forward. Exhale, bend your knees and fold, soften. Inhale, arms with your ears, hands together, lift up, look up. Exhale, hands down. Last one, inhale, lift your arms, look up. Exhale, bend your knees, fold. Inhale, lengthen, chest forward. Exhale, hands to floor, step back, high plank, keep exhaling, lower down. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, down dog. If you're doing down dog, try to get your heels to the floor. If your heels aren't touching the floor, try taking a wider stance. If you have tight hamstrings or knees, you can micro bend your knees to take weight away from the backs of the legs. Otherwise, press your thighs back, push your hips up, drop your head, breathe. Inhale, look forward, step forward, lengthen. Slowly exhale, fold. Inhale, reach your eyes, lift. Exhale, hands down. Wonderful, that's our little warm up. We will now hop into 26 and two yoga, starting with pranayama, deep breathing, standing, deep breathing. Come to the middle of your mat, feet together, toes, heels touching nicely. Interlock your 10 fingers, cross your thumbs, glue your knuckles underneath your chin. Rock your weight into your heels. Relax your shoulders down away from your ears. You made it to class. Concentrate, meditate, and begin. Inhale, chin down and arms up. Breathe in through your nose. Lift your elbows up. Suck your stomach in. Fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up. Exhale through your mouth. H A. Sound. Drop your head back. Reach your arms forward. Elbows touch. Good. Inhale. 
Elbows out and arms up. Slowly bring your chin down, look straight ahead. Lift your elbows all the way up, breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up, slowly push your head back. Look way, way, way back for the wall behind you. Arms forward, elbows touch, pointing forward. Inhale, head down, use your chin to push your knuckles down. Fingers stay interlaced up to the webbing, palms face the floor. Exhale, head up, now use your knuckles to push your head back. Squeeze your palms together. Wrists straight, wrists together, forearms, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, breathe in through your nose, down through your throat to the very bottom of your lungs. Exhale, head up as you exhale, open your mouth wide like you're fogging up a mirror on the ceiling. Look back, arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down, keep the weight in your heels, squeeze your thighs, squeeze your glutes, lock your legs. Exhale, head up, weight stays in the heels, just the head drops back. Note if you're, if you're leaning back, puff up your chest, reach your arms forward, elbows touch. Inhale, head down as you inhale, suck your stomach in, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles. Exhale, head up, even as you exhale, abdomen in, shoulders down, elbows up, triceps parallel to the floor. Inhale, head down. Every new inhale, you want to take in more air than the last breath to expand your lung capacity. Exhale, head up. The more you exhale here, the more fresh oxygen you can take in on your next breath. Push the air out. Inhale, head down. Last breath in the first set. Spine a little longer. Elbows a little higher. Lungs a little fuller. Suck your stomach in. Breathe deep, full lungs. Exhale, head up. Take your time. Eyes open, hips forward, legs locked, stomach in. Keep exhaling. Push. Squeeze, elbows touch, change, arms down, you can roll out your shoulders and head. Second set, feet together, interlock your fingers, switch the grip, other thumb, pinky finger on top, bring your knuckles underneath your chin like glue. Squeeze your thighs, squeeze your butt, grow taller out of the base of your spine, and begin, inhale, chin down and arms up, breathing in through your nose, lift your elbows up, Suck your stomach in, fill up your lungs. Exhale, head up, exhale through your mouth, slowly tilt your head back, stretch your arms forward, elbows touch, lungs empty. Inhale, head down for one, two, three, four, five, six, full lungs. Exhale, head up for six, five, four, three, two, elbows touch, one, inhale, head down, use the full six seconds to inhale, take in more and more and more air. Exhale, head up, use the full six seconds to exhale. Synchronize your breath with your body movements, elbows touch, lungs empty. Inhale, head down. Exhale, head up. Inhale, head down. Exhale, head up. Inhale, head down. Exhale, head up. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, two more. Exhale. Inhale, head down, last breath. Second set, deepest breath of your life. When your lungs are totally full, surprise yourself. Take in one more sip of air. Exhale, head up. Take your time, let everything go through the exhale breath. Any worries, any cares, let them go. Be here now, elbows touch. Beautiful change, arms down. You can roll out your shoulders and head. Ardha Chandrasana with Padastasana, half moon with hands to feet pose. Feet together, inhale your arms over your head, sideways palms together. Interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs. Nice tight grip, stretch up out of your waist and bend right and left, right and left. Every time you pass through the middle, reach up a little taller, like we're trying to touch the ceiling. And when you can't stretch anymore, come to stop in the middle. 
Bring the weight into your heels, push your hips a little forward, squeeze your palms together, upper body back, touch your biceps to your ears, stomach in. Inhale, breathing, stretch up out of your waist, try to touch the ceiling. Exhale, breathing, absolutely straight line, slowly bend your body to the right. Without bending your elbows, without bending your knees, continuously push your hips to the left beyond your flexibility, creating a tremendous stretching feeling on the left side of your body, all over, inside out, bones to skin, fingers to toes. Just remember it's the first posture of the day and there's no rush, know where you have to be, nothing you have to prove to yourself or to anyone else. All you have to do is breathe in and out through the nose. Keep the weight in your heels, push your hips a little forward, squeeze your palms together, upper body back, touch your biceps to your ears, push your left hip a little forward to get your two hips in line. Now bring your right shoulder forward, open your chest like a flower petal blooming, come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, stop in the middle. Imagine you're leaning against a wall behind you, abdomen in, inhale, stretch up. And exhale, slowly bend to the left as you push your hips to the right. Come down without holding your breath, right? You want to breathe slow. We're going to breathe through the nose for the rest of class. If at any point in class you find that you're holding your breath, you can't breathe or you want to breathe through your mouth, slow down, do a little bit less. When we breathe through the nose, it tells our central nervous system that there's no need to fight, flight, or freeze. And especially if you exhale a little bit longer than you inhale, it can really bring you into a nice state of calm. Weight in the heels, arms through the ears, chin away from the chest. Inhale, lengthen your arms, slowly exhale, come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, first back bend of the day. Take a deep breath, full lungs, keep your eyes open. Relax your head back as far as it goes. You can give your head a gentle shake, look for the floor behind you, squeeze your butt, lift your chest, and immediately bring your arms back with your ears. Try to touch the wall behind you. So whole spine back bending from coccyx to the neck, lower back, middle back, upper back, bend your total spine backward bending, keep the weight in your heels, lock your legs, inhale breathing, push stomach, thighs, hips, everything forward, and bring your arms back, look back, fall back, lay back, go back, more back, change, inhale to come up, big stretch up, exhale, bend your knees, hold, arms of the ears, hands to floor, drop your head, go for a walk, move your hips, shake your head, this is a U-turn from back bending to forward folding. At the beginning of class, your spine might not be quite warmed up yet. Move your hips to get your lower back nice, relaxed, comfortable, easy, flexible. Padasasana, hands to feet pose, bend your knees halfway. You can grab the backs of your calves, your Achilles, or your heels from underneath. Step on all 10 fingers. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, and lift your hips up. Throughout the posture, touch stomach to thighs. Chest to knees, face to the shins below the knees. No room for light and air between the upper and lower body. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes, stomach in, eyes open, roll forward, hips up, knees back, pull and stretch, change, come up, arms with ears, knees can bend as you lift up, beautiful, arms down, and you stand a little taller, second set, feet together, inhale, arms overhead sideways, palms together, working the shoulders, interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs, other thumb, pinky finger on top, switch your dominant grip out. Push your hips a little forward, squeeze your palms together up to the wrists, upper body back, push your biceps into your ears, inhale, stretch up, exhale, slowly bend to the right as you push your hips to the left. So we're just waking up the spine at the beginning of class. You know, we bend right and left kind of as a warm up for backward and forward. So here we're stretching the left side body, toning the right side body, don't collapse. Use your right hand to pull your left hand to the top right corner of the room, push your left heel into the floor, Push your right heel into the floor, get a little deeper at the end, come down, push, push, push. Change, inhale to come up, stop in the middle, hips forward, arms back, stretch up, and slowly bend to the left as you push your hips to the right. Push the pads of your fingers into the backs of your hands, squeeze your palms together. Seal off any gap between your biceps, arms, and ears. Contract your quadricep muscles, squeeze your gluteal muscles, and push your hips a little forward. Pull your abdomen in and slide your breastbone up. Push your right hip a little forward, two hips in line. Left shoulder forward, two shoulders in line. Come down, push and push and push. Change, inhale to come up, second heart opener. Keep your eyes open, relax your head back as far as it goes. Squeeze your butt, lift your chest and bring your arms back with your ears. Try to touch the wall behind you. Excuse me, whole spine back and then whole front of the body stretching. Keep the weight in your heels. If your knees are bending, come up a little bit, lock your legs, push stomach, thighs, hips, everything forward, arms back, look back, fall back, 
Way back, go back, more back. Change and heel to come up, stretch up. Exhale, bend your knees, fold hands to floor, drop your head, go for another walk, move your hips, shake your head. Notice what's a little bit more loose in the second set, what's still just a little tight or tender. There's no right or wrong. Um, a lot of yoga is just a beautiful opportunity to check in with yourself, to get to know yourself a little bit better in body, mind, and spirit. How to fasten the hands to feet pose, bend your knees halfway. You can grab the backs of your legs or your heels from underneath. Pull on your heels, roll your weight into your toes and lift your hips up. Stretch your upper body down from the lower spine to the floor. Imagine you're gonna slide your nose between your shins so that the top of your head touches the top of your feet. Pull on your heels, elbows back a little bit more, shoulders up a little bit more, roll forward, hips up, knees back, pull, stretch, try to lock your knees. Good, change, come up, biceps with ears, chin away from the chest as you lift. Nice, arms down. And you let that one go. Awkward, you can toss this, step your right foot to the right, six inches, hip width distance, insides of your feet parallel. Arms up, parallel to the floor, tricep muscles tight, all five fingers together, thumbs with your index fingers. Reach your arms forward, suck your stomach in, bend your knees, sit back and down into a chair. Feet flat position, spine straight to begin with, 100% of your body weight in your heels, sit down halfway only, hips into a chair. Suck your stomach in and lean your upper body back, depression to abdominal wall, contraction to abdominal muscles, suck it in, hold it in tight. Your arms are your counterbalance, reach your arms forward, drop your shoulders down, now lift your chin up, chest up, lean back, fall back, way back, change, inhale to come up, keep your arms there. Push your hips a little forward, spread your toes wide, come up maximum on your tippy tippy toes like a ballerina. Stretch up, bend your knees, sit down and lean back. So rather than sticking your butt out, try to tuck your tailbone under, pull your abdomen in and stretch the crown of your head up to the ceiling as you sit down. Change, inhale to come up, last part, still breathing. Squeeze your knees, inner thighs together. Let your heels come a little off the floor and slowly sit down. Take your time, listen to your body, I'm gonna stop right here because of a toe injury, but you can keep sitting all the way down. Squeeze your knees together and forward, thighs parallel to the floor, arms parallel to the thighs, spine perfectly straight. From the side, looks like you're holding a box. Change, slowly come up, squeeze your inner thighs and knees together as you lift up. Good, heels down, right foot back, arms down, take a breath. Second set, step your right foot to the right, Hip width distance, insides of your feet parallel, arms up, parallel to the floor, triceps tight, fingertips together, reach your arms forward, pull your abdomen in, bend your knees, sit back and down. So you wanna engage your abdominal wall the whole time as you sit down. Weight in the heels, shoulders down, lift your chin, keep your neck long, start to lean back, lift your chin up, chest up and change. Come on up, keep your arms there, push your hips a little forward. So again, rather than sticking your butt out or folding forward, you want to push your hips forward and stretch up. Lift your heels as high as they go, stretch up, bend your knees and sit down. So keep lifting your heels all the way up, knees all the way up, shins forward, hips forward, fingertips forward, shoulders down, sit down into a chair, but don't sit below a chair. Change, last part, coming up. Squeeze your knees, thighs together, pull your abdomen in, stretch the crown of your head up to the ceiling and slowly sit down, slower, builds a little bit more strength in the body, right? So you wanna go slow, smooth with control. Squeeze your knees together and forward, pull your abdomen in, keep stretching the crown of your head up to the ceiling. Change, slowly come up, knees together. Good, and when you're ready, heels down, right foot back, arms down, eagle pose. Garasana, we're gonna do the right side first. Inhale your arms over your head, big stretch up. Exhale, swing your right arm under your left arm, right elbow under left elbow, cross first at your elbows. Again, if you can at your wrists, you can interlace your fingers, have palms together in prayer, you can grab a thumb, you can also grab your shoulders and give yourself a big bear hug. Pull your elbows down. Bend your knees, sit down into a chair, just like the first part of awkward pose. Stay down there, lean back and bring your right leg over your left leg as high as possible. Right leg over left leg, cross twist and breathe. In and out through your nose. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back. Bring your knees to the right, upper body to the left, twist like ropes, sit down and lean back. Good, change feet together, arms over your head. Let's do the left side. Bring your left arm 
under your right arm, left under right. Notice if your hands are going to the right of your face. You're gonna pull your hands back to center and then drop the right shoulder down to even out the shoulders. Bend your knees, sit down, hips down into a chair, lift your chest, lean back and bring your left leg over your right leg as high as possible. Left over right, cross twist, squeeze and breathe. In and out through the nose. On this side, knees a little to the left and upper body to the right. You want wrists, elbows, knees, and ankles all in one line. Notice if the weight is in your toes. Bring the weight back into your heel. To sit down, you can bend your knees, stick your butt out a little bit, fold forward, elbows down, stomach in, arch your upper body back at the end. Good, change. Feet together, arms over your head. Let's do second set. Swing your right arm under your left arm. This time, if your hands are going to the left of your face, you're gonna pull your hands to the right and then drop the left shoulder down. One day fingers go below the nose. Bend your knees, sit down, lean back, and bring right leg over left leg, right over left. Push your left hip a little forward, right shoulder a little forward, work on squeezing the inner thighs together. Push the top leg into the bottom leg, sit a little bit lower, breathe a little slower, bring your upper body back at the end. Good, change feet together, arms over your head. Last one, here we go. Left arm under right arm, think bicep under tricep. Can you get your wrists straight and your fingertips in line? That's like a lifetime of work. Pull your elbows down, sit down, lean back, and bring left leg over right leg, cross twist and breathe. If your foot is coming out, sit down more. If you're losing your balance, arch your upper body back, bring your knees to the left, upper body to the right, twist like ropes, sit down lower, elbows down more, stomach in, upper body back at the end. Good, change, feet together, arms over your head, slowly arms down, party time, you can grab a sip of water if you want. Cheers. Another thing to keep in mind this time of year, especially if you're in the mid-Atlantic region where there's a lot of storms that blow through in the afternoon or the evening, um, I have noticed over the years that especially on a stormy day or when a storm is building up, when the air pressure changes, uh, it is a little bit more difficult to balance. So if you notice, it's like sunny right now in DC, but it's been kind of like off and on raining. But if you ever get the opportunity to practice yoga, hopefully indoors, but maybe outdoors in the middle of a rainstorm, you might notice that your balance shifts as um, air pressure kind of like shifts as well. Uh, and this is just a greater sign, right, of like, as we become more aware of our body, we start to become more aware of like the weather, air pressure, things like that changing. Some people even say like, you know, this like moon cycles, right, and the, like the pull of the ocean, gravity, things like that. Um, and the more aware you become of it, sometimes like the crazier that sounds, but uh, summer storms are like a wonderful example of how as we become more in tune with our body, you might find that like, oh, you're rolling, but you might fall out a little bit more um, on a rainy day, something like that. Just something fun to keep in mind. Standing head to knee, Dande Wanda Johnny Shrasna. Shift your weight to your left leg, lock your left leg, lift your right leg up, I digress, point your toes, flex your toes, keep your toes flexed back. Option to stay here, stomach in, or as you're ready, round down and pick up your right foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, webbing to webbing grip. From start to finish, standing legs should be solid, concrete, one piece, lamp post, unbroken, you have no knee. If you know your left leg is locked, no bend, no wobble. Inhale, breathing slowly, gently. Lift your right leg up. Stretch it forward until your right leg is exactly parallel to the floor. No higher, no lower. Standing leg lock. Take a breath. Kick your heel forward. Flex all five toes back towards your face from the ankle. You're training your Achilles to stretch. If both legs lock from the side, legs make an upside down L like Linda. Bend elbows down. Touch elbows to calf muscles. One day, elbows go below the calf muscles. Lock your knee. Lock your knee. Lock your knee, change, arms straight, bend the leg, right foot down. Shift your weight to your right leg, big toe points forward, contract inner thigh, outer thigh, lift your kneecap, squeeze your side seat as well as your gluteus maximus. So all the muscles in your standing leg, all the muscles that surround your hips, your pelvis, your abdomen, they're all working to keep the bones and joints stable. Lift your left leg up, point your toes, flex your toes, feel the difference. Pointer flexion, keep your left toes flexed back to your face, the whole time, especially your pinky toe, this will help to square off your hips. Option to stay here or as you're ready, start to round down and eventually pick up your left foot. All 10 fingers interlocked, 
even your thumbs under your foot. If your standing leg is bending a lot, stay here. Think about lifting your hips and tell your knees over your ankle. From here, when you're ready, lift your left leg up. Notice if your heel is turning in and your toe is turning out, this is the hip opening up. Move your left heel to the left and then press your heel forward so that the hips are even, ankle is in line with hips on both sides. If both legs lock, you'll feel tremendous stretching feeling on the backs of your legs, maybe even a cramp on your thigh as the hip flexor engages, puff up your chest and then bend elbows down. Notice if the elbows are going out and the shoulders are tensing up, drop the shoulders down, hug the elbows in, bring the chest down. One day elbows go below the calf muscles. Change, arms straight, bend the leg, Left foot down. You can put your hands on your back and do a little back bend, boom, or an even. Huh. Second set, shift your weight to your left leg, squeeze your left thigh tight. The name of the game, can you keep your big toe on the floor the whole time? Lift your right leg up, flex your toes back, pull your abdomen in, round down, and pick up your right foot. All 10 fingers interlocked. So keep your big toe down, face relaxed, standing leg locked, and when you're ready, lift your right leg up. If both legs lock and your big toe is still firmly on the floor, bend elbows down. If elbows go below calf muscles and big toes still on the floor, tuck chin to chest, put your forehead on your knee. You gotta keep moving the hips forward to keep the big toe down. Lock your knee, lock your knee, lock your knee. Keep the big toe down. And when you're ready, head up, big toe down, arms straight, big toe down. Bend your right leg, right foot down. Shift your weight to your right leg, lock your right leg. Don't forget to have fun. Lift your left leg up, flex your toes back, pull abdomen in, round down, pick up your foot, concentrate, meditate, breathe through your nose. Here we go, lift your left leg up. Kick your heel forward, continuously keep kicking without stopping, without intermission. If both legs lock, pop up your chest first and then bend elbows down. Elbows go below calf muscles, slowly tuck chin to chest. Put your forehead on the knee. Keep the core tight to take weight away from the hip. Lock your knee, heel forward, toes back, stomach in. Change, keep the big toe down as you bring the head up. Arms straight, bend the leg, left foot down. Good for you. Standing bow pulling pose, Dande Amana Dhanurasana. Bring your right hand up, out to the right. Give yourself a high five for practicing yoga today. Yes, reach back without turning or twisting your wrist. Pick up the inside of your right foot at the ankle bone, thumb with your index finger. Bring your left arm up and back, right hip forward and down, knees together to start. Lock your left leg, point your right toes, lift your chin. Option to stay here or when you're ready, take a breath, stretch up and slowly charge your body forward. Simultaneously kick your right leg back and up. Take your time. Keep your chin and chest lifted. Standing leg locked. At first, just finding a place where you can balance. Breathe and back bend. So keep your chin and chest lifted as you start to come down. Bring the body down and the leg up. See the foot come directly over the top of your head. From the side, two heels in line. Kick back and up, two shoulders in line. Body down more, leg up more. Kick, kick, kick. Beautiful change, slowly with control. Kick yourself up. Best way to fall is forward. Bring your left hand up, out to the left. Reach back without turning or twisting your shoulder. Pick up the inside of your left foot at the ankle. Bring your right arm up and back. Left hip forward and down, knees together. Lock your right leg. Point your left toes. Lift your chin, lift your shoulder, stretch up. And slowly kick into your hand. Simultaneously charge your body forward. Kicking and stretching should be equal simultaneous, 50-50. The harder you kick, you can balance forever, kick really hard. If you fall out, take a breath, hop back in, kick even harder. Slowly bring the body down, so from the side, two heels in line, kick back and up, two shoulders in line. Touch your chin to your shoulder, shoulder blade scapula, stretching away from the body. Body down more, leg up more, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly with control. Kick yourself up, feet together, arms down, take a breath. Second set, bring your right hand up, out to the right, reach back, pick up the inside of your right foot at the ankle. So this is such a lovely shoulder and chest opener. So many of us have like tight shoulders, tight chest, right? This is gonna open all of that up. 
Bring your left arm up, right hip forward, knees together. Lock your left leg, point your right toes, lift your chin, stretch up, and slowly kick, stretch, breathe. You're kicking in two directions. You're kicking up and you're kicking back. Slide your shoulders apart. Create maximum space between your left fingers and your right shoulder. So you really get the opening to the chest and shoulder. Slowly come down. So from the side, two heels in line, right foot directly on top of the left foot, body down, leg up. Charge your body forward, kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly with control, kick yourself up. Whew, last one, bring your left hand up, out to the left, reach back, pick up the inside of your left foot at the ankle, right arm up, left hip forward, knees together. Lift your right knee back, point your left toes, lift your chin, stretch up, and slowly swipe your right arm along the profile of your face as you kick your left leg back and up. So can you touch your shoulder to your chin? Tricep tight, all five fingers together, hand flat, thumb with index finger. Slide your right shoulder forward, relax your left shoulder back, and come down parallel. Two heels in line, two shoulders in line. Body down, leg up. Charge your body forward. Kick, kick, kick. Good, change slowly. Kick yourself up, very nice. Come to the back of your mat, tool it into asana balancing stick. Feet together, inhale your arms over your head. Big stretch up, palms together, interlock fingers, release index fingers, cross thumbs. Lean back, touch your biceps to your ears, chin away from your chest, neck long. Imagine there's a board strapped to your back. Step your right foot forward. Shift your weight to your right foot. Pull your abdomen in, stretch up, point your left toes, and when you're ready, start to come down like a slow moving seesaw. At first, maybe just one or two inches. Eventually, arms, body, head, legs, everything parallel to the floor. So from the side, body makes a T like Tom, not a broken umbrella, stretch, 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 change, left foot down, right foot back, pull the abdomen in, seal off the gap between arms and ears. Lean back a little, step your left foot forward, stretch up, pull your abdomen in, point your right toes and start to come down like a slow moving seesaw. Arms with the ears, chin slightly away from the chest so the neck stays in line with the rest of the spine. Chest down, chin forward, legs up, arms up, stretch, change right foot down left foot back arms down take a breath good for you second set arms overhead palms together interlock fingers switch the grip release index fingers cross thumbs step your right foot forward lock both legs stretch up point your left toes and when you're ready come down abdomen in the whole time so your back stays flat right the more you contract the quadricep muscles the more you pull the abdomen in, the more weight you take away from the knees and the hips. Chest down, chin forward, leg up, stretch, change. Left foot down, right foot back, big stretch up, stomach in. Step your left foot forward, lock both legs, stretch and tilt. Can you squeeze your palms together the whole time? The moment your arms come away from the ears, the posture's over. Keep the arms of the ears, body down more, leg up more. Lift your leg up, leg up, leg up, stretch, change. Right foot down left foot back, arms down. Enough of that. Come to the top of your mat. You can face the long side of your mat for the next three postures. I will continue to face you. Standing separate leg stretching, Dandayamana, Bikapthapada, Paschimottanasana. Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale. Step your right foot to the right. Big step, four feet minimum, arms down parallel to the floor. You can turn your toes in a little bit to interiorly rotate the hips and pelvis. Lock your legs. Lift your chest and swan dive forward. If you have a hip replacement or um, sciatica, point your toes forward instead so that the pelvis is not internally rotating. Otherwise, toes in, grab your heels from behind, bend your elbows back, elbows to calf, shoulders to ceiling, belly button to spine, everybody roll forward. Lift your hips up, push your knees back, lock your legs. First the leg stretching, then the hip stretching, lower spine stretching, whole spine stretching, Full body stretching, three 60 degree angle stretching, coccyx to toes, coccyx to forehead, touch your forehead to the floor, in between your feet. Good change, slowly come up, take your time. Step your right foot back to the place, arms over your head, and slowly, consciously arm down. So we're trying to practice awareness throughout class. If in the first set you were aware that your head was touching the floor, take a smaller step. 
if your forehead was nowhere near the floor, you can try taking a little bit of a bigger step, just never so wide that you lose control of your legs. You wanna feel the stretch in the hamstrings and the spine, not the inner thighs. Second set, arms overhead sideways, step your right foot to the right, a generous step, arms down parallel to the floor. You can turn your toes in or point your toes forward, lock your legs, pop up your chest and swan dive forward. Good. Now let's say the knees are bending a lot. Start with your hands on the floor in front of you. Walk forward. Trust that your hands are there to catch you. Lift your hips up. Push your knees back. Lock your legs. Option to stay here or now walk your hands back and see if you can grab the outsides of your feet or even your heels. Bend your elbows back. Elbows to calves. Shoulders to ceiling. Belly button spine. Everybody roll forward. Lift your hips up. Push your knees back. Pull. Stretch. Lengthen and change. Slowly come up, legs locked, lift from the lower ribs. Very nice. Step your right foot back, arms up, and slowly consciously arms down. Okay, triangle trikonasana. Inhale your arms over your head. Exhale, step your right foot to the right. An even bigger step, arms down parallel to the floor. You want your uh, ankles under your wrists. Push your hips forward, lean your upper body back, turn your right foot out, maybe left toes in, two heels in line. Inhale, bend your right leg and lunge. You can bounce a couple times to warm up your hips and knees, and then sit as low as you can. Pull your abdomen in, lean back, keep your spine straight in the middle, and move your arms at the same time. If your right thigh bicep is parallel to the floor, elbow in front of the knee. If your thigh isn't quite yet parallel, that's really normal. Keep maybe your wrist or forearm in front of the knee. Look up towards the ceiling, touch your chin to your shoulder for a nice spine twist. Push your left hip forward and down. Push your right knee back with the help of your elbow. Stretch your arms apart. Pull your abdomen in, turn, twist upper body back like spine twisting posture. Lock your left leg, keep your left foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg, right toes in, left toes out, two heels in line. Inhale, bend your left leg and lunge. You can bounce a couple times. You can also try taking a bigger or smaller step if it helps you to sit down. Lean back and move your arms. So if your thigh is parallel to the floor, maybe elbow in front of the knee, but you never touch the floor, never put any weight on the floor, hover your fingers between your big and second toe. Look up, touch your chin to your shoulder and really stretch your right arm up. Stretch your left arm down, opposite direction. Sink your right hip down, push your left knee back, bring the left rib cage forward, right shoulder back, turn, twist upper body back, lock your right leg, keep your right foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your left leg, left toes in, right foot back, arms up, and slowly arms down. Take a breath. Second set, arms over your head, big stretch up. Step your right foot to the right, a generous step. Be generous with yourself. You want your feet under your hands. Push your hips forward, lean back, turn your right foot out, maybe left toes in a little bit, bend your right knee and sit down. It is possible to take too big of a step, right? You want your knee directly over your ankle, not like in front of the ankle. Sit down, lean back and move your arms, elbow in front of the knee, hover your fingertips between your big and second toe. Don't touch the floor, don't push any weight on the floor. Look up to the ceiling, touch your chin to your shoulder. So you want your shoulders in line here. Uh, oftentimes people will bring the left hand back but they won't bring the right rib cage forward. So worry less about bringing the left arm back and more about bringing the right rib cage forward. Open your chest like a flower petal blooming. Imagine you could lean your whole body against a wall in front of you, even the profile of your face. Lock your left leg, keep your left foot flat on the floor. Change, rotate your arms, straighten your right leg, right toes in, left toes out, heels in line, not crisscross. Bend your left leg, sit down, lean back. Move your arms, elbow in front of the knee, right arm up to the ceiling. Look up, stretch up, reach your right arm up, stretch your left arm down. Um, uh, eventually your nose and your right thumb will be in the same plane. So really bringing uh, head back a little bit and right shoulder up a little bit, chin and shoulder touch. Sink your right hip down, push your left knee back, pull your abdomen in, stretch the crown of your head up, turn, twist, lock your right leg, right foot, flat on the floor, change, move your arms, straighten your leg, left toes in, right foot back, arms up, and slowly arms down. Hi, just slowly over the course of class, gaining a little bit more consciousness, a little bit more awareness of how we move, especially like, how do you move when your heart rate is elevated? 
versus how do you move when your breathing is slow? Second, uh, not second set, first set, standing separate leg, head to knee, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs. Step your right foot to the right, three feet, 36 inches. Pivot on your heels to one side of the room. If you're on the long side of your mat, you'll be on the back of your mat. Turn your back left toes in, push your left hip forward, one, two, three, four, five times. Two hips in line, two heels in line, back side foot makes a 45 degree angle. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down slowly with control. Chin to chest, stomach in, round your spine, squeeze your front, touch your forehead to your knee. Stretch your fingertips beyond your big and second toe. If you need to take a bigger step or bend your front leg to bring your knee and head together, go ahead and do that. Eventually forehead and knee touch, but you're never forcing your body, especially anytime we fold forward around our spine. Take it easy, especially if you have a history of slip discs or your back is a little bit achy today. One day forehead and knee touch, never forcing. Push your forehead into your knee, walk both legs, hands together, change. Slowly uncurl, left hip forward, left shoulder forward, full stop at the top. When you're ready, pick up your toes, pivot on your heels to the other side of the room. Uncross your heels, turn your back toes in, move your right hip forward, right rib cage forward, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and slowly with control go down. So part of you know building control in the body is also just building awareness of the body, right? When we move slow, we're usually a little bit more aware than when we're kind of moving fast or mindlessly. Chin to chest, pull your abdomen in, touch your forehead and knee together. Stretch your fingertips beyond your big and second toe. Bring maximum weight to your front foot. Left hip up, right hip forward, two hips in line, throat choked, eyes open, breathing normal. This is a compression posture. We're squeezing, compressing, toning, strengthening the front of the body. Push your forehead into your knee, walk both legs, lift your kneecaps, hands together, change. Slowly come up with as much care as you went in, chin to chest, arms of ears, hands together, head up last. Good. Pick up your toes, pivot on your heels, step your right foot back, and slowly arms down. Take an inhale and an exhale. Second set, Johnny Sharasana, head to knee, arms overhead, sideways, palms together, cross your thumbs, other thumb on top. Step your right foot to the right, a nice big step, at least 36 inches. Pivot on your heels, turn your back toes in, push your left hip forward one, two, three, four, five times. Two hips in line, two heels in line. Back side foot makes a 45 degree angle. Stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest, and go down, chin to chest, arms with your ears, Stomach in, touch your forehead to your knee. Maybe start to walk your hands back together if they've separated, maybe thumbs crossed, maybe palms together. Not because you have to, but because you can, right? We're working on um, not just like physical strength, but also mental fortitude and inner peace, inner calm. Let nobody steal your peace. Push your forehead into your knee, lift both kneecaps, lock both legs, hands together. Change, imagine you're dragging your forehead up your thigh, your chest, arms as an extension of your spine, head up last. Pick up your toes, I'm gonna face you, coming to the front of your mat, turn your back toes in, push your right hip forward. Notice if your hands are separated, press your palms together, use your bicep strength, stretch up, chin to chest, go down. Palms together, chin to chest, stomach in, touch your forehead and knee together, left hip up, right hip forward. So uh, when you line up your hips and shoulders, you line up both sides of your back. So you're not like overly stretching one side of the body or twisting in any way. So left hip up, right hip forward, two hips in line, front side compression, throat choked, jaw relaxed, eyes open, stomach in, breathing normal. Push your forehead into your knee, lock both legs, hands together, change, go slow, press the palms together, use the biceps, chin to chest, head up last, good. Pivot on your heels, right foot back, slowly arms down. Wonderful, come to the middle of your mat, tree pose, Tadasana, shift your weight to your left leg, walk your left leg and lift your right leg up. Touch your heel to your costume, sole of foot flat to ceiling. Slowly, gently let your right knee drop down and back into a half lotus shape. Never force your body. This is a great hip and knee opener, but you want it to happen gradually over time. Bring your right hand up to the center of your chest. 
and if you can balance left hand. So part of yoga is kind of resisting the instant gratification, right? But actually, for those of you who've worked really hard on a posture and then it finally kind of happens one day, whatever that is for you, right? That feels better than the postures that like you got the first day, right? So we're working on a little bit of the slow burn here. One day hands together, change, right? Like down, shift your weight to your right leg, lock your right leg and lift your left leg up. Heel to costume, slowly, gently, let your left knee drop down and back. One day from the side, two knees in line, never force your body. Move your left hip a little forward, hips pointing forward, left hand up to the center of your chest. And if you can balance right hand, but if your foot falls like mine does, you can hold on to your foot the whole time. Be more interested in opening your hips than closing your hands. I'm sure there's a metaphor in there somewhere. Change left leg down. You can do a second set of tree. You can also do another fun posture called toe stand, Padangustasana. Pick a spot on the floor, four feet in front of you. Don't move your eyes. Lock your left leg and lift your right leg up. Heel to costume. Slowly, gently let your right knee drop down and back into a half lotus shape. You can bring one or both hands together. Option to stay here or as you're ready, start to fold forward. Hands to the floor first. Lean forward, lift your heel, bend your knee, sit down on your heel. Walk your hands back to either sides of your hips as you stretch the crown of your head up to the ceiling. Left hand up to the center of your chest, right hand up, palms together, elbows down, spine long, come a half inch off your heel. When you're ready, hands to floor. You can come up on two feet or lift your hips up to straighten your standing leg and then push your hips forward to come out just the way you went in. Beautiful, change, right leg down, shift your weight to your right leg, squeeze your right thigh tight, and lift your left leg up, heel to costume, let your left knee drop. You can bring one or both hands together. I'm not gonna do this side because of a toe injury, but I will walk you through it. So without moving your eyes from that one spot on the floor, start to fold forward. Looking at one spot helps with balance as well as practicing concentration, meditation, and focus outside of yoga. Hands to floor, lean forward, lift your heel, bend your right knee, sit down on your heel. Whether you're in tree or toe, check in with your breathing. Start to walk your hands back to either sides of your hips as you stretch the crown of your head up. Left hand, right hand, palms together, elbows down, spine straight, come a half inch off your heel. When you're ready, hands to floor, you can come up on two feet or lift your hips up, straighten your standing leg, heel down, and then push your hips forward, lift from the lower ribs as you come up. Good, change, left leg down, honor yourself, give yourself high five, fist bump, turn around, savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. We are on the floor for the rest of class. I'm going to adjust our camera angle ever so slightly. Wee. Okay, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat, heels together, close fall open, arms down, palms face the ceiling, Eyes open, mouth closed, breathing normal. Savasana is a gas station, let it fill you up. I read an article years ago about like, you know, it was some like article like why I love Bikram yoga. And it was like six points. And <laughs> the article itself wasn't anything groundbreaking, but there was an anecdote in it that I, I often think about. And um, so I actually Googled the article again today because I wanted to read it. So the, the number three reason why this person in 2015 was like, why I'm obsessed with Vikram yoga. Number three reason, it's the same every time. I once read an interview with Art Garfunkel, which I have never been able to find again, despite many efforts, in which he said something that stuck with me ever since. It was about the core difference between him and Paul Simon, one of the main reasons Simon and Garfunkel broke up. Simon, he said, loved variety and improvisation. Every time they played live, he wanted to do things a little differently. Garfunkel was the opposite. He liked doing it the exact same way every time because it allowed him to hone in and perfect it, to focus on nailing those tiny, subtle variations and nuances. Stuff listeners might not even notice, but for him, were everything. I am generally in life, and specifically with regard to exercise, a Garfunkel, a creature of set habits and repeated patterns. I like to do the same things again and again, perfecting them as I go. And while I certainly would push back against the notion of perfection in yoga, because I truly don't believe that it exists, I do also, like for me at least, 
people ask me all the time, it's the same every time, don't you get bored? And I'm like, no, because it's not the same every time, right? Like who you are today is different from who you are the last time you practiced and what's going on in your body is different. Uh, the weather is different, right? Like there's so many uh, internal, external factors that are constantly changing. And it is both, um, I think, deeply meditative to have a home base that stays the same every time in exercise, that in and of itself is calming. But, you know, to the point that Garfunkel makes, there's subtle shifts that you as the practitioner of yoga are aware of that somebody else might not notice if they were watching you. Like even a trained teacher might not notice how your standing bow felt different to you today than it did when you practiced yesterday. But that's like a really beautiful thing that only you get to experience in your own body, right? And I think it's helpful to kind of like validate our own experience, our unique experience of being human, uh, all the joys and the sorrows that that brings and all the like micro shifts that that brings. The yoga stays the same so that you can change. Pavana Muttasana when removing pose. Bend your right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, grab your right shin, nice tight white knuckle grip. Pull your knee out to the right, down towards your shoulder, completely avoid your rib cage. Keep your head on the floor, look down the center line of your body, pull down extra hard, maximum pressure in your lower abdomen. Change, right leg down, bend your left leg up, pull your knee out and down and hold. If your right calf muscle does not naturally touch the floor here, flex your right toes back towards your face to anchor the right side body down. Change, left leg down, both legs lift up, grab your elbows, each other, give yourself a really big hug for coming to class today. Good for you, squeeze your knees together and down, keep your head on the floor. Without lifting your head, tuck your chin in a little bit, keep your head on the floor, press your shins into your forearms, roll your hips onto the floor. Eventually, or in the future, when the bone joint skeletal system has improved, the whole spine from coccyx to the neck will be flat on the floor. Change, arms down, eyes open. So I'm also a Garfunkel, but I have a little bit of Paul Simon in me as well. If you also have a little bit of Paul Simon in me, shameless plug, come to Ghosh Flow Yoga with me Thursdays at 6 p.m. We follow the same sequence of this yoga, but we do some fun variations. Second set, bend your right leg up, interlock your 10 fingers, switch the grip, other thumb, pinky finger on top, pull your knee out to the right, down towards your shoulder, completely avoid your rib cage. Push the pads of your fingers into the backs of your hands to strengthen your grip. Pull down, massaging ascending colon. Change, right leg down, bend your left leg up, pull your knee out and down, massaging descending colon. This posture is great for digestion. You are purposely putting pressure on your lower abdomen to relieve gas bubbles from the stomach. Change, left leg down, both legs lift up. Grab your elbows each on there, give yourself another hug. Make sure your heels are in line side by side, not crisscross. Head on the floor, look down the center line of your body, look for a little diamond shape between your knees and your hands. Squeeze, breathe, hold, and release. Change, arms down, eyes open. Next, we do a straight leg sit up. If you have any concerns about your back, skip the sit up, roll off to the side, meet us on your stomach. Otherwise, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Okay, elbows to floor, forehead to knees. Beautiful turn, lie on your abdomen for the spine strengthening series, starting with Cobra, Bhujangasana, good for your lower lumbar spine. Place your hands flat on the floor, just below your shoulders, so your elbows point up to the ceiling. Zip up your legs like a cobra's tail, toes and heels touch. Lock your legs, look up and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor. Use 100% back strength, beautiful. Come up halfway only, just your belly button on the floor, the rest of your chest is in the air. Elbows stay bent, so you are pushing your hands into the floor, but you're not relying on your arm strength here. It's the back that it's the back muscles that really start to fire. Lock your legs, squeeze your butt, push your feet down, hips down, hands down. Look up, chin up, chest up, stretch up, breathe up. Good, change, slowly lower down. Tuck in your wings, look to the right, left ear on your mat, arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. Second set, bring your chin forward, place your hands flat on the floor, just below your shoulders so your elbows point up. Little fingers in line with the outsides of your shoulders, your deltoids. Zip up your legs, lock your legs, look up and lift. Stretch your upper body off the floor. So notice if the fingers separate the palms cup or the hands or elbows turn in or out. All five fingers together, hands flat. And you're pushing your hands into the floor a little bit, but it's really the back strength that's working here. Feet together, lock your legs, squeeze your butt, keep your neck long. Push feet, hips and hands down, lift your chest up. Good, change slowly with control, lower down. 
to your left, right ear on your mat, arms down, palms face the ceiling, toes together, heels fall open. So I love both Paul Simon and Art Garfunkel, but a little known fact about me is that I really love Jimmy Buffett. That's right, I'm a huge parrot head. I'll get to that in a little bit. Bring your chin forward, arms straight position, rotate your arms, palms face the floor, bring your arms underneath you as best you can, one day pinky fingers touch for Lokit Shalabhasana. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up to a 45 degree angle, half of 90, see the foot come directly over the top of your head. Press your shoulders down, lock your right leg, point your right toes, lift your heel up, change right leg down, relax your right leg, lock your left leg, point your left toes, and lift your left leg up. Keep your hip and forearm in contact so that the hip doesn't open up. Stretch your big toe to the back wall. Imagine you're trying to turn on a light switch with your left foot. Change, left leg down. Third part, tuck your chin in a little bit so your mouth is on your mat. Bring your arms a little closer underneath you. Spread your fingers wide. One day pinky fingers touch, but hands never overlap. Zip up your legs like a cobra's tail. Toes and heels touch. Squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, roll forward, and lift both legs up. Come up. Everybody come up. You can do it. Struggle a little harder. Don't give up. Mouth down, shoulders down. Squeeze your butt, lock your legs, lift your thighs up. Change, slowly lower down. Bring your arms out. Look to your right, left ear on your mat. Take an inhale or an exhale. So the thing, if you go to a Jimmy Buffett concert, right, like let's take the song Margaritaville, right? That's like a, a crowd favorite. He will play a slightly different version from the studio album version. It's different from what you would hear on the radio or on, you know, Spotify or, or whatever, the Pandora, whatever that is. Um, but the live version is the same every time and there's like unique traditions around it. So for fellow parrot heads that like to go to a lot of Jimmy Buffett concerts, even though they're not listening to the studio version of the song, there's like certain cues where everybody yells at the same time or does something else fun. So even though it's a little bit different from the recorded version, it's still um, a unique but repetitive cultural thing that people get to do together at the concert, which is super fun. Bring your chin forward, arm straight position, rotate your arms, palms face the floor. Bring your arms underneath you as best you can, one day pinky fingers touch. Lock your right leg, point your right toes, and lift your right leg up. So keep your hip and forearm in contact. Spiral your inner right thigh up so the sole of your foot is flat to the ceiling. Lengthen and lift. Change, right leg down. Relax your right leg. Lock your left leg, point your left toes, lift your left leg up. Press your shoulders down. It's five o'clock somewhere. Lock your left leg, squeeze your left glute, point your left toes, lift your heel up. Change, left leg down, third part, tuck your chin and mouth down. Bring your arms a little closer underneath you, spread your fingers wide, mouth down, shoulders down, squeeze your butt, lock your legs, point your toes, roll forward, lift both legs up, knees, feet together. Notice if the knees are bending, lock your legs, press your shoulders down, triceps tight, roll forward, lift your thighs up, change, slowly lower down, bring your arms out, look to the left right here on your mat. So what I love about 26 and two yoga is similar to a Jimmy Buffett concert, we have um, like cultural things that go on in studios around the world. So a big example, right, is like party time, right? Like you can go to studios in so many different countries and after Eagle Pose, you hear party time and everybody grabs water at the same time. That's not structural, right? That's not part of the yoga, but it's part of like the culture of this style of yoga. Or for example, um, you know, lock your knee, right? Whatever that means, that's, I think, in some ways that saying, yes, it's about lifting the kneecap, contracting the quadricep muscle, stabilizing the knee joint, but it's also kind of an ism, right? Or like a 747 taking off. Bring your chin forward, Purnishalabhasana full locust, arms out to the side like airplane wings, feet together, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, squeeze your butt, point your toes, look up and lift, arms, body, head, legs, everything lifts off the floor like a 747 taking off, just your hip bones on the floor, the rest of your body's in the air, look up to the ceiling where your eyes go, body nose to follow, all five fingers together, thumbs with your index fingers, hands at a 45 degree angle, arms perpendicular to the body, feet together, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, lift your thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end, good, change slowly with control, lower down, tuck in your wings, look to the right, left ear on your mat, so the, the notion of an outdated 747 plane has nothing to do with locust pose or full locust pose, right? But it's this ism that you can hear different teachers say around the world, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so again, I think in yoga, but especially in a repetitive sequence like 26 and two yoga, hot yoga, 
um, we have to separate like the culture around it versus the postures themselves, right? So the yoga itself is like old and it's cool and it's deeply healing, but the cultural stuff is kind of fun too. But in both cases, if something does not work for you, don't do it, right? Like take what works for you, leave the rest. Second set, full locust, chin forward, arms out to the side, feet together, toes, heels touch, lock your legs, point your toes, squeeze your butt, look up and lift. Everything lifting off the floor. Try to get your thighs off the floor, ribs off the floor. So one day truly balancing on your hips. This posture is so good for your back muscles. You're working through the chest, the shoulders, the heart meridian and Chinese medicine, strengthening the back muscles, it's healing compression of the spine. You're also engaging the um, glutes, the hamstrings, the calves, the triceps, thighs up, chin up, chest up, look up, come up a little higher at the end. Good, change slowly lower down, tuck in your wings, look to the left, right here on your mat. So that's the structure of the posture, right? Like what muscles are we using? What parts of our body are we opening, stretching? What parts of our body are contracting? Noticing the difference between um, like the essence of the posture versus like little cute stuff like lock your knee, right? Chin forward, Dhanurasana floor bow, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, two inches below the toes, thumbs with the index fingers. One day knees, feet start together. Point your toes, squeeze your butt, look up towards the ceiling and start to kick into your hands. Continuously keep kicking without stopping, without intermission. It's the kick that drives the posture. Roll forward once, freeze between your ribs and hips, hold still. Do little sips of air in and out through your nose. Bring your knees in, feet out, wrist straight, point your toes, keep your neck long. So you're not dropping your head all the way back, but it's also not like chin isn't to chest, right? Neck long, arms up a little bit more, kick, 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 good, change slowly, lower down, look to your right, left ear on your mat, take a breath. And one of the metaphors that I've often heard used to describe this style of yoga is like listening to your favorite song, right? Like you get to listen to your favorite song um, once a day or, when I, or once a week, once a month, whenever, however often you practice, right? And that's such a lovely thing to do. And I think, again, like a lot of teachers like me try to both do the fun isms and make it a little bit different every time. So we're a little bit Paul Simon, a little bit Art Garfunkel, but either way, the essence of the yoga, the postures, that's what stays the same, right? Even as you listen to that favorite song, even if it's a little bit of a remix sometimes, bring your chin forward, bend your legs, grab your feet from the outside, two inches below the toes, thumbs with your index fingers, point your toes, squeeze your tush, look up and kick into your hands. Bring the insides of your wrists close together so your wrists and shoulders are in line. Notice if your knees are way wider than your feet, squeeze inner thighs together so your ankles, knees, and hips are in line. Point your toes, look up, kick and kick and kick. Good, change slowly, lower down. Look to your left, right here on your mat, take a breath. Bring your chin forward, put your hands on the floor, push up, come to the top of your mat, fix firm, supta vajrasana. I'm gonna show you from the side, open your knees, open your feet, point your toes back as you're ready, walk your hands back. You can keep your hands in front of you, beside you, or behind you the whole time until one day you can sit down between your heels. If you can sit between your heels and you're not in pain, put your hands on your feet, right elbow down, left elbow down, drop your head back, head to the floor, Tuck your chin in, neck shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows each other and hold. Wherever you are is perfect. You want a gentle stretch through the lower body, but never a point of pain. If you have to like force your way into it or like hold your breath or grit your teeth, probably a sign that you've gone a little too far. You do want to feel something though, a little bit of a stretch. Change, put your hands on your feet, push yourself up carefully, head up last, very nice. Turn around, Savasana. You let everything stretch out, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. So there's the essence of the yoga. There's the kind of the culture of this style of yoga, which I find mostly charming, but um, you know, when it gets cult-like, then it's toxic, not into that. But a lot of it's charming, right? You can go anywhere in the world and you're like, you know, lock your knee or solid concrete one piece lamppost unbroken. I find that very charming. And then the third aspect of it is what we call house rules. And those are things that vary studio by studio or like uh, group by group. So for example, you might go to a yoga studio where you have to take off your shoes the minute you enter. That's like a house rule, right? It's not true across the board, but it's something that um, we literally want to be respectful of when we're in someone else's house. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Elbows to floor, forehead to knees. 
which way you face, like if you stay on the long side of your mat in the separate leg series, that's a house rule. Second set, fixed firm, open your knees, open your feet, walk your hands back, sink your hips down. And the coolest part about yoga from home, you're in your own house, make your own rules. If you can sit between your heels, put your hands on your feet, right elbow down, left elbow down, drop your head back, head to floor, tuck your chin in, neck, shoulders on the floor, arms over your head, grab your elbows each other. If this is all easy, maybe walk your shoulders back closer to your hips to lift your chest higher. And if that's easy, maybe bring your knees closer together, but knees never come off the floor. Change, put your hands on your feet, push yourself up, head up last, very nice. Turn around, Savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. And if this last year, you know, one of the silver linings of it, I think, is like creating ritual within our own space. So make sure that, you know, the same way that if you were to go to a yoga studio, you would want to respect their house rules. Make sure that you're respecting like your own space within your yoga practice, right? Um, treating like yourself good when you're in class, drinking water when you need to, um, you know, putting your phone away, right? What, whatever that stuff is that you would want like in a yoga studio, right? You can make that ambiance within your own space. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, come to the back of your mat, half tortoise, Ardha Kramasana. Sit these feet together, hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs, stretch up and go down, chin away from your chest, forehead to floor, little fingers to floor, elbows and wrists off the floor, tilt your pinky fingers down. Reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, stretch, stretch, stretch. This is a really nice way to lengthen the spine, lengthen from the lower back, the hips, the neck, the shoulders, especially after all those back bends. Change, come up, chin away from the chest, arms with ears, very nice, arms down, turn around, savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Sometimes I think as humans, we get stuck when we're like, well, I've always situated my mat in this one place for the last year. So why would I switch up what I'm doing now? If something is not working for you, whether it's like in, you know, the space that you're practicing yoga or the postures, just because you did it one way the last 300 times doesn't mean you have to do that today. Don't be afraid um, to like switch up your practice, right? Taking a modification, maybe trying that posture that you always skip, right? Maybe skipping that posture that you always do. Don't be afraid to switch it up even within the repetition of 26 and two sequence. Legs together, arms over your head, flex your feet, squeeze your seat, sit up. Good, come to the back of your mat, second set, half tortoise, knees, feet together, hips on your heels, arms over your head, palms together, cross your thumbs, other thumb on top, stretch up and go down slow with control. Chin away from your chest, forehead to floor, little baby fingers to floor, reach your arms forward, sink your hips down, re-energize, reorganize, revitalize, stretch. Good, change, come up, chin away from the chest, abdomen in, very nice, arms down, turn around, savasana. If the sit-ups are bothering your back, you are always welcome to skip them by rolling off to the side. The sit-ups, like everything else we do, are optional. If you never do sit-ups, maybe every once in a while, give them a try, right? So the, the practice doesn't stay stagnant. And that's true even of, you know, an Art Garfunkel. It's not that he was doing it the same every time. It's that he was honing it a little bit more every time, right? Adjusting the things every time. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Okay, come to the top of your mat, camel, Ustrasana, our deepest back bend. Camel on hump day can be a real doozy. Happy Wednesday. Stand on your knees six inches between knees and feet. Put your hands on your lower back, push your hips forward, keep your eyes open, start to look up. One day hug goes back, option to stay here or go back halfway, threes in the middle. Option to stay here or when you're ready, right hand down, grab your right heel, left hand down, grab your left heel, thumbs outside, fingers inside full palm grip on your heels. Push stomach, thighs, hips forward, lift your chest up, drop your head back, look for your toes behind you. Good, change, put your hands on your back, push yourself up carefully with control, head up last, turn around, savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. So I think it's, you know, the quote is attributed to Einstein that says like, it's madness to do the same thing over and over again and expect different results. 
Um, but yoga is really interesting in that you might have noticed by now that actually that's kind of what works, right? And that's because we're organic beings, like our synapses are always firing differently. Our um, like skin is always regenerating, right? We are um, quite literally on a physical plane, not the same person that we were uh, yesterday or the last time we practiced. So even though from an outsider's perspective, it might look like we're just doing the same thing over and over again, I think hopefully you've all realized by now or had the experience by now, right? That like things do change even through repetition, which is pretty profound. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. So the same way you never step into the same room twice, you never come into the same yoga class twice. So enjoy this very unique second set of camel. Stand on your knees, you can open your knees a little wider, eight to 10 inches between your knees, six inches between your feet. Put your hands on your lower back, push your hips forward, keep your eyes open. One day head goes back, option to stay here or go back halfway, freeze in the middle, option to stay here or when you're ready, right hand down, grab your right heel, left hand down, grab your left heel, thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels, push stomach, thighs, hips forward, lift your chest up, drop your head back, let go. And when you're ready, change. Put your hands on your back, press yourself up carefully, head up last, stretch up, turn around, savasana, head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. And this is a really wonderful opportunity to use the hard flat surface that you're laying on to really stretch out. So we are using the flat floor, the hard floor as um, a tool for alignment in between postures, letting everything realign. Legs together, arms over your head tight, but it's fleeting. Tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. <sighs> Wonderful, come to the middle of your mat and towel for rabbit, sasangasana. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, make L's with your hands like little bunny ears. Grab your heels from the outside, thumbs outside, fingers inside, full palm grip on your heels, stretch up, tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Go down slowly with control, especially anytime we round the back you really want to go in and out of it slowly so that if something doesn't feel quite right, you can adjust. Forehead to knees, top of head to floor, reach back, grab your heels, option to stay here or pull on your heels and lift your hips up. One day arms lock, one day hips over knees, heels together. If there's a gap between your knees and forehead, you can lock your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Squeeze your heels together, press your hips forward, lift your shoulders up, suck your stomach in, round your spine. Good, change, hips down. Slowly uncurl, vertebra by vertebra, disc by disc, cut up last. Very nice, turn around, savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, second set, knees, feet together, hips on your heels. Grab your heels from the outside, stretch up tall. Tuck your chin to your chest and go down. Chin to chest, stomach in, forehead to knees, top of head to floor, pull on your heels, don't lose the grip, lift your hips up. If there's a gap between your knees and head, you can walk your knees up one by one, but head stays in place. Squeeze your heels together, press your hips forward, lift your shoulders up, suck your stomach in, round your spine. Good, change hips down, slowly uncurl. Cut up last, very nice, turn around, savasana. Head to the front of your mat, feet to the back of your mat. I always laugh, I had it. Someone told me once, they were like, it sounds like you're on helium when you're in that posture. And I was like, yes, that is what my like female voice box sounds like when my voice box is being compressed upside down while I'm talking. Sometimes when you hear like head to knee pose massages internal organs, you like me might be like, what does it mean to massage an internal organ? I also don't know, a little bit mysterious, but I do know that like on a literal level, when we compress the front of the body, things change. Like voice box is an excellent example if you've ever tried to like talk in rabbit pose or head to knee. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good, come to the middle of your mat until John Ushirasana head to knee pose. Right leg out, left leg in, two legs make an L. Inhale your arms over your head, big stretch up. Exhale, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest, put your forehead on your knee. Interlock your 10 fingers up to the webbing under the ball of your foot, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, suck your stomach in, left elbow down, left shoulder down, roll into the left. 
Good, change, arms up, left leg out, right leg in, big stretch up. Turn to your left, tuck your chin to your chest, put your forehead on your knee, flex your toes back. Great way to stretch the calf and Achilles, bend the elbows down, pull the abdomen in, roll into the right, change, arms up, both legs out in front of you, option to stay here or lay down and sit up. Good, Paschimottanasana, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with peace sign fingers, thumbs on top, scoot your butt back, right, left, right, left, 10 to 15 times. Knees can stay bent if it helps you keep a flat back. If your legs are straight, lock your legs, pop up your chest and fold. Stick your butt out a little bit, stomach to thighs, pull, chest to knees, stretch, one day toes and head touch. Good, change, come on up, turn around, Savasana. Maybe like four years ago, I got very sick and completely lost my voice. And anytime I did talk, I had to talk like this. And I remember seeing my ENT specialist and she said, I'm so far, or my ear, nose, throat specialist and said, I'm so sorry, but when, you know, when we get you off antibiotics, like when you're finally healed, you're most likely going to have to take voice training lessons again, because like your throat muscles have changed from being sick for so long. She was like, you're probably going to have to take like speech classes in order to, to speak properly again. Legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. <sighs> Surprise, didn't have to do it, right? Like how left leg in, two legs, make an L, inhale your arms over your head, big stretch up. Exhale, turn to your right, tuck your chin to your chest, put your forehead on your knee. Was it the yoga? I don't know, but I do suspect the fact that I'm used to both compressing my voice box, the muscles in my throat and expanding them, as well as working on my core strength so I can project from my core rather than from my throat, helped me heal my throat uh, faster than your average bear. Chin to chest, change, arms up, left leg out, right leg in, big stretch up, turn to your left, tuck your chin to your chest, put your forehead on your knee. So you're actively compressing your throat here, right? Which in Ayurvedic medicine, we would say stimulates the throat chakra. In Western medicine, we would say stimulates um, thyroid, parathyroid chakra, working on the throat muscles, the voice box, flex your toes back, bend your elbows down, change, arms up, both legs out in front of you, option to stay here and stretch up or lay down and sit up. Good, Paschimottanasana stretching, second set, bend your knees, hook onto your big toes with peace sign fingers, thumbs on top, scoot your butt back, right, left, right, left, 10 to 15 times. Knees can stay bent if it helps you keep a flat back. If your legs are straight, lock your legs, puff up your chest and fold. Stomach to thighs, pull, chest to knees, stretch, one day toes and head touch. Beautiful, change, stay seated, spine twist. Bend your left leg on the floor, touch your right heel to your left knee corner, right arm close behind you, left arm up and over, push your knee out of the way, grab your left knee with your left hand, hand, heel, and knee touch. Inhale, stretch up, stomach in. Exhale, look over your right shoulder twist. So we compress the throat, then we stretch the throat, now we're twisting the throat, right? Working on the muscles there. You can keep your right hand behind you or reach behind you, grab your left thigh with your right hand for the half bind, keep your spine straight and your chest lifted. Inhale, stretch up, exhale, look back, twist and twist and twist. Good, change, unwind, swap out your legs, bend your right leg on the floor, touch your left heel to right knee. You can also have your right leg long in front of you, left arm close behind you, right arm up and over, draw a circle, grab right knee with right hands. So you're working on that shoulder mobility, hand and knee touch. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, look over left shoulder twist. You're also working on core strength, right? Sitting up nice and tall, abdomen in. You can keep your left hand behind you for stability or reach behind you. Grab your uh, right thigh with your left hand, but notice if you're leaning back or to one side, sit up tall, evenly distribute your body weight on both sit bones. Inhale, stretch up. Exhale, pull abdomen in, look over left shoulder, twist, twist, twist. Good, change, unwind, turn around. Savasana, head to the front of your mat, peek to the back of your mat. So it's little things like that that I think we don't always consider that we're doing in class, but like, you know, a big part of like uh, the theory in Ayurvedic medicine, for example, with compression in chin to chest, is that it's not just the compression of head to knee or a chin to chest pose, it's the release from that as well, right? It's actively tucking your chin to your chest and then releasing it that can release like, I don't know, life force energy, your prana, right? Whatever that is, legs together, arms over your head, tuck your chin to your chest, sit up. Good. And you might take that with a grain of salt like I do, but it is something to consider. Knees, feet together, hips on your heels, hands on your thighs. If it hurts to sit on your feet, don't do it. This is called Kapalbhati breathing. It's a, a rinse, right? We're rinsing out the inside of our body through the exhale breath. Lick your lips, swallow a couple times, concentrate, meditate. 
Don't forget to have fun. Here we go. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. So this posture is good for abdominal strength. It's good for lung strength. Um, and also, especially if you're in DC today where air quality is very low, think about like pushing out all of the like gross air particles from your lungs. So we start with this big expansive breath at the end of class and we end very intentionally pushing any last gunk out of the lungs. Sitting up tall, shoulders down, arms straight and begin. <laughs> Five, four, three, two, one. Good for you. Honor yourself. Give yourself a hug, a high five, pat on the back, turn around, relax, final savasana. Whether you are a Simon, a Garfunkel, a Buffett, or just yourself, probably just yourself, yoga is a really wonderful place and a safe place to get to know yourself a little bit better, to get to accept yourself a little bit better, and maybe even radically to love yourself a little bit more. Take an inhale through your nose, feel your chest rise. Exhale through your nose, feel your shoulders fall. You are so very loved. <laughs> 